Uh, so next recipe, uh, this is one of my probably favorite dishes, uh, crab cakes. Um, and we're, we've got a really nice, it's a little spin on your traditional crab cake. Um, my pet peeve with crab cakes in restaurants, I'm gonna go on a rant here, is they're mostly breadcrumbs, right? Yes, a lot And of you get like little small amounts of the crab, so it's a lot of filler, usually. Yes. Not in these. These are gonna be cream of the crop. <laughs> and and we're gonna we're gonna fill them with flavor, but not yeah, not like kind of that breadcrumb and sort of that bland and yeah, more yeah, filler. Filler is a good word. Uh, so we're gonna use uh, a few ingredients here. We're gonna start off with an egg as a binder. And we're using crab. You don't have to use crab, but you can also do this um, with Shrimp and scallops, I've actually learned how to do them. And what, oh. you, you, what you want to do ahead of time is just pulse them in a food processor. So you're almost making like a paste. Um, and then you can do the exact same thing. And they come out fantastic. You could, could you do this with white fish too? Yes, you would. Uh, do like you cod probably, cakes or you something? could do cod. I would probably cook it ahead of time. Yeah, cook the cod ahead of time just till it flakes apart. And you can make cod cakes exact same way. So you would just sub the crab for the cod. And all the ingredients here. Um, you can sub, just, just kind of follow the same basic princi principles. So we're gonna start off with our wet ingredients. So we've got an egg. You can always use a, a flax egg, which is just flax seed and water. That'll go in. Yogurt. Uh, most crab cakes have mayonnaise in it. Um, but again, just a wet, a wet ingredient. The yogurt works really, really well here. Yogurt is a beautiful cooling food, as you probably notice if you go to any restaurants where they serve spicy food, like in Indian or Pakistani cuisine. They, you often have a mango lassi or you know a yogurt kind of drink on the side mm -hmm. to help with that spicy sensation. Um, any dairy products can really help to cool that down. Absolutely. So those are our wet ingredients. Now we're going to add uh, some fresh. Uh, aromatics. Uh, so onion, red onion, shallots. We have some nice just green onion here. Uh, this is Ontario green onion. Uh, look out for it because we don't often see Ontario green onion. Um, but it's showing up in the grocery stores now. It's fantastic. Beautiful. Very, very flavorful and fragrant. So that's going to go in. Fresh herbs. Again, mint, parsley, cilantro. It's cilantro. Cilantro, it's cilantro. For those of you who aren't a big fan. So that's going to go in. Big flavor. A crab is going to go in. Uh, this is fresh Dungeness crab meat. Um, you can use, you know, you can use the jarred, the canned ones. Just keep in mind that the sodium level tends to be a little bit higher. Uh, so just adjust your seasoning accordingly. Um, and you can, you can even use if you want to boil crab and crack it yourself and do the whole process, so you can do that That's as well. Incredible, yeah. A lot of the, the packaged kind of, you know, imitation crab that you see is basically a white type of fish yes. and then they've added um, cornstarch and salt and all kinds of other preservatives and stuff to it. So it's actually pretty low in protein and it's got more of the sugars and starches, if you check that out. So for this recipe, I definitely, you know, go for the more natural type of crab, or do Jeremy's idea with the shrimp and the scallops, yeah, or another type of fish. It doesn't you want to get some more protein. Yeah, in. It doesn't really taste really good. It doesn't have a good crab. flavor to it either. So we're gonna toss the crab a little bit in there, and then we're gonna add instead of breadcrumbs, I've got about half a cup of cooked quinoa. This is a great, and it's not necessarily a filler. It's gonna provide some texture, great nutrition. Uh, some really nice color as well, but any grain would work here. So I've seen people crush up soda crackers in there. You can do that. You can do millet. You can do um, any sort of grain would be fantastic uh, as a substitute for this. And it's cooked, not raw, so cooked. That goes in. Great way to add some extra fiber to your crab cakes, which you don't often get here. Absolutely. And we're going to add a little bit of seasoning. So. You can add whatever you want, dry spices, dry herbs. Um, I have uh, Malaysian curry powder, beautiful flavor. Cinnamon, coriander, cumin, turmeric. Um, curry and crab together goes really well. But again, use what you want. This is just, just a little bit, just to season it. And we can add just a pinch of salt. And that's it, done. Really, really simple. 
I'm just going to stir that up. So you're going to make like almost like little meatballs. You can make them as big as you want. Depends how much you like your friends and family. Or <laughs> you can just do them all for yourself. It's fantastic. Uh, but it's nice that you can kind of customize the size. So we're going to do... Chrissy's a little bit bigger than mine. She really likes crab cakes. I like cakes. generous crab cake. And you can either bake these in the oven, uh, 375 for about 15 minutes, or we're going to do um, just a little bit of oil into a, into a saute pan. And because there's, I mean, there's no breadcrumbs, there's, it's not, there's not a lot of binding, just be very gentle with the, the crab cakes. Yeah, they don't, don't hold together, them. like the, the ones that are heavy on the bread, they really absorb kind of the, the wet ingredients yeah. and they're more sticky and all the gluten kind of sticks so that together. starch and yeah. Yeah, so this one, because it's gluten free, we're not getting really that stickiness. So you really have to, you know, pack it gently. And so we're doing it in a pan, um, and that's good, medium heat uh, for about four minutes per side just until you get a kind of a nice crust. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So to serve with the crab cakes, um, this is a condiment um, using Korean food. It's a Korean condiment uh, called kimchi. Has anyone heard of kimchi before? And you're probably really nice. wondering, why are we making kimchi during a cooling and refreshing summer class? I was skeptical. I thought he was bringing on the heat. But we're doing a special kind of kimchi today. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it's really up to you. Um, you can go either, either two ways. Um, you know, you, you, there's no reason why you find a lot of spicy food sometimes in hotter climates because it does cool you down. Um, it's used to kind of activate those sweat glands like I have going on now. And, <laughs> and, it, and it cools you down. But we can, so you can go one of two ways. If you like a little spicy, um, you're going to look for Korean chili flakes. I, I wrote this down because I knew I wasn't going to remember the name. Uh, gochiguru. Gochiguru, did I say that right? It's in your recipe. Did I say it right? I think it sounds like it's, it's spelled. Gochugu, gochugaru. I was close. It's a, it's a, or you can just ask for Korean chili flakes. That's, that's another <laughs> way you can do it. Um, again, spice it up. Or uh, a St. Lawrence Market, that's where, that's where I got mine uh, in the basement there. Uh, probably find it in Koreatown. Yes, some of the Koreatown, absolutely. Fantastic flavor. It's not overly spicy. It's got like a medium to mild kind of heat, but the flavor is fantastic. Um, or if you want completely mild, you can look for these chili flakes, which are called Aleppo, Aleppo chilies. Um, you can find, again, similar grocery stores. Um, and it's, it's got a nice flavor from a chili, but it's mild. It has no heat at all. Um, and so you can add that if you want as well. So that's going to go in. We're going to add some ginger. And what I'm actually adding it to is Napa cabbage. There's a Chinese cabbage. Um, you can even use purple cabbage, regular cabbage. This is traditionally what, what's used. Um, so that's going to go in there. We have some ginger minced. That's going to go in there. We have some uh, rice wine vinegar. That's going to go in. And just a little bit of honey. Sometimes uh, sugar is used. I uh, find honey works just as well. And you don't need too much. You're just going to have that kind of sweet and savory going on. And the vegetables are up to you. Um, daikon is usually used. You can use carrot. You can use thinly sliced onion. Uh, these beautiful cukes, these mini Ontario cukes are, are in season now. Uh, perfect for making cucumbers. I usually buy bushels of these and make delicious cucumbers. Uh, pickles? But, yes, pickles. I don't make cucumbers. <laughs> pickles. Uh, surprise, surprise, it's a cucumber. Yes. <laughs> that would be very surprising. Uh, but I don't like pickles either. No, no, no. All of this, okay. You can make your own, which is great. If you buy pickles at the supermarket, all the sodium you need in a day is in one pickle. It just kind of blows your sodium budget out of the water. So don't ask for the pickle if you're watching your, your salt intake. Um, and it's especially important if you have high blood pressure that you keep your eye on your sodium or your salt levels. Yeah. So we're going to add no sodium or very little in here. No so pickles th here. This is uh, just an Ontario cuke. And we're going to use the mandolin. You can thinly slice it. You can even grate it with a grater if you want. That would work absolutely fine. The mandolin's a lot nice because it gives you those really thin slices. It 
comes with a guard. Use the guard. I lost my guard. I should replace the guard. Uh, I just go very slow. And typically kimchi is fermented. So it's kind of like your Korean sauerkraut uh, when you think about it. Um, we're going to do this fresh. It's going to be a fresh. It's not going to be a fermented kimchi. Um, if you did want to ferment your kimchi, um, it's usually you put it in a, in a warm area for about three to four days. It starts to, you start to smell it and uh, you can put it in the refrigerator. But if you don't feel safe, you don't feel comfortable making your own fermented kimchi, then uh, the fresh one is fantastic, really, really nice. So radishes too, radishes are beautiful. We don't use radishes enough, I think they're underutilized. They have an amazing fresh cooling um, flavor, uh, beautiful texture, um, and they're again, great for something like this, kimchi. So cabbage, cucumber, radish, those are my vegetables. And then I have some flavors from the, from the chili. I use a mild chili, but you can use a spicy one. Some honey, rice wine vinegar, and the ginger. And what I want to do is just, I'll take that off the heat. What I want to do is just toss it up really well. Those chili flakes, you want to distribute them everywhere. So we're going to toss that up in here and it's going to sit in the refrigerator. You can do it an hour. Overnight is best. Um, and then you're going to end up in a different jar too. No. <laughs> Beautiful condiment. Excellent. This is great on top of burgers. You can put it on top of um, most things. and it has, It's going to have a really nice crisp, really nice refreshing flavor. Um, and it's going to go perfect with our crab cakes. And then we'll take some of our kimchi. And that's it. So those are our crab cakes, quinoa crab cakes with our fresh kimchi. Perfect for the summer. 